Hey, Stan Lane with uh, Lucy Nicandri joining the Fast Boats Marine Group. Tony and Randy and the boats right behind us, they have moved up uh, from uh, Super Cat to Super Boat. We'll discuss that a little more at length, but I know, Lucy, you were interested in getting some background on these guys, weren't you? Well, absolutely. You know, I think people want to know how it all started. How did you guys, what was your first boat? How did you get into racing and how did you progress to this? Uh, it's, it's been a long, uh, long haul, many years. You know, I've got involved in uh, motorcycle racing and some car racing when I was younger. And um, actually one of my, once I got out of graduate school, one of my, uh, my first jobs, I was hired by a legend, Mr. Richie Powers. And uh, that was back in 1989. Richie Powers was, uh, they had the Bud Dry boat, the Team USA boat, and he was throttling for Don Johnson. And, and um, you know, I was the low man on the totem pole. He hired me as a salesman. And uh, I just kind of hung out with the race team and, you know, got to ride in the back of the boat a couple of times. And, you know, when Richie would do some sea trials, we also had a guy, Ed Cozy, there who was a, you know, ex world champion offshore racer. So I was kind of surrounded by guys in North Miami there, 188th Street. I was kind of green. I didn't really know much about it. And uh, so I, I guess if you're surrounded by it for long enough, I mean, sooner or later you, uh, you get it in your veins. And, um, you know, my first go around, the first actual race boat uh, was uh, one of the fellow racers here, Rob Nunziato. Rob had a 30 foot motion cat. And uh, this was back in 1995. We, uh, I partnered with him. Larry Golden was a buddy of mine at the time, and uh, Rob is his, is his cousin. And so, um, the boat was called Power Broker originally. Um, it was a 30 motion. We did real well with it. Um, I'll never forget our first race we did was Isla Morada, and uh, you know I was studying the course real hard. You know, and one, you know, of course I'm a rookie, first time out. I don't want to make a mistake. And um, I remember Larry Goldman back then was running the Mountain Dew boat with Joey Padovano. So uh, green flag drops, they take off, the whole fleet takes off, and we had started in the back. So all of a sudden I see everybody going not on course. So I'm telling Rob, you know, Rob says to me, follow them, follow them. I said, no, no, I said, you know, we, we got to turn. So I turned the boat, everybody kept going straight. So, uh, you know, the first race, we're out in first, we're in first position overall. So, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of interesting. And uh, so then the, the fleet started to come and you know, of course the faster boats were catching us. And um, it was a great experience up until uh, we were leading. I think we had about two or three laps left to go. And uh, all of a sudden we lost power. I looked back and we we're missing a motor. So <laughs> it was uh, hanging underneath the back of the boat, dangling by the cables. So that was, uh, that was the end of that first race. But, uh, you know, graduated from there, went to um, race 35 Motion Cat, and it was called Factory 3 and then Super Cat Light with uh, Larry Golden. We did that for a bunch of years. The race was Super Boat, had a great time. We were the uh, runner up, um, I think in 02, 01 and 02. Um, you know, we had kind of a big crash in Key West. So uh, took us out of the worlds. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. You know, I got out of it for a little while. You know, I've been doing, I did the poker run circuit for a long time, built a lot of new Nortex and things like that. And, um, you know, I always said I would get back into it, you know, when I could have a boat that was, you know, was really safe. And um, that was one of the things here, building this MTI, you know, with Randy Sism that, you know, I wanted a boat with a full safety cell and, you know, something that, uh, you know, I knew from the crash that we had in, in Key West in 2002 in that 35 motion that, you know, you needed some protection around you. And um, so, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, I partnered up with Danilo Zampoloni originally from Italy. You guys, he raced with, uh, together for about a year and a half. And he'll be back. I think he'll be back. He's, uh, you know, had some issues to take care of over in Italy. You know, the economy's not doing so well over there. But, um, you know, so we just, uh, you know, now with the new class, I mean, we love this 525 class. It's been, you know, it's been great. It's a, I think it's a, an excellent class to, you know, for a guy who doesn't want to spend a ton of money uh, to go out and be competitive and be in a big, safe boat. Um, this new 750 class, you know, it's going to give us a little more speed, so it's going to be a little more fun for us. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, probably going to be a little more expensive to maintain them and stuff, but um, from what I can see, I, I think we're going to have maybe six or seven boats in Key West. So, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to race against more boats. I mean, that's the whole reason that we do this. Uh, we had some great battles with steel over the last couple years and you know but as steel will tell you i mean you know you get tired of racing get the same guy every time so uh you know then uh you know brought tony on board you know i was looking for a new uh i was either going to sell the boat 
or uh, look for a new race partner and uh, had a couple people that uh, you know wanted to to come in the boat but you know as you know Stan being a fellow racer I mean you you trust your life with the guy beside you so you really need to have that comfort factor for somebody who's in the boat with you and um, you know Tony and I've been friends a long time did a lot of snowmobiling up in the mountains doing some extreme snowmobiling and stuff like that and he had done some motor uh, some snowcross racing so and he's always had that you know desire to go fast just like I do so uh, you know I said to him I said hey what do you think you 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 interested and I wasn't sure what kind of response I was gonna get you know <laughs> and he's like yeah so I'm in I said okay well you know so it's it's been a it's been a great experience I mean I told him I said second race we got a win in Miami I said I don't know how many races it took me to finally get a checkered flag but it certainly wasn't the second one and uh, but so far we're having a lot of fun um, you know it's a it's a little disheartening having to you know change the motors out and spend the extra money and stuff this year but um, you know we're we're enjoying it and we're looking forward to the worlds I think that's uh, Tony's never done the worlds so you know what I've always said with the worlds I mean you just never know what to expect you, you know the water conditions from one day to the next um, you know boat traffic uh, uh, wave conditions wind conditions I mean that's just a race course that just throws so much at you you know you get calm water you get rough water you get the you know when you hit the channel out there you know that the way those kind of waves stand up I mean it's, it's just it's everything and you really have to be on your game otherwise uh, you know you, you have an issue as we see you know in Key West a lot of boats you know going over and, and, and involved in accidents so and you're pushing a little bit harder you know there's uh, you know so you got to be smart about your setup and uh, you know smart about how how to run the boat not run it too loose and uh, but we're looking we're looking forward to Key West and, and beyond. Well, he certainly couldn't have chosen a, a better conditioned athlete. You're a world class uh, triathlon and uh, all kind of background. So give us some of your background, uh, Tony, and uh, not only the boat racing, give us that as well, but but how you came about to be here racing with uh, this guy and a very, very successful uh, MTI cat. Well, as Randy had mentioned, uh, he and I have been friends for a long time and uh, have had a number of uh, offshore power boats and, and had a real zest for the uh, sport. It was just uh, ironic that he called and, and asked me, and I think it took me about a all about a nanosecond to say <laughs> yes. Um, you know, so it was pretty uh, pretty exciting, I have to admit. And uh, as I, you know, sitting and talking to Randy and asking a lot of questions, because obviously it'd be the first time I've professionally raced and, and uh, to really understand what I was getting into. And as Randy pointed out, you know, with my background in aviation and I fly, you know, jets and turboprops and different things. and. And with the snowmobiling, as mentioned, he said, you're going to be a natural. And quite frankly, it feels pretty natural sitting in the cockpit there. And and uh, <laughs> we went through some pretty interesting deals on our very first race in Sarasota from a steering wheel coming <laughs> off to, to a few other things. So it was really a nice way to, I guess, uh, you know, get acclimated to the sport and, and get a chance to really get a, a feel for things. But Miami was a lot of fun. It was rough. It uh, was a great experience and really looking forward to being out here in uh, clear water and, and uh, running in these nice conditions because it seems the water is going to be pretty flat. Well, speaking of those conditions, you know all about them, Lucy, because you're just a, just a stone's throw down the road in Sarasota. You drove, drove up here a very, very short drive, but you know all about the water conditions here from, from doing the race there. What is so different about the Gulf waters? Well, the Gulf water is pretty much calm most of the time. Um, you don't have a lot of confused water like we had, you know, up in Michigan City and even New York. But, but still, you know, the wind changes. You can you can get into rough seas very quickly. Everybody says, oh, it's pristine, it's calm, but it can still change. It can change up really quick. Now uh, we touched on it uh, briefly. The the brand new class Superboat. You guys are stepping up from Super Cat to Superboat. You're allowed to use your 525 motors, but you can change the ECM boxes, increase the revs. What else can you do to make these motors competitive with that brand new 510 cubic inch spec motor? Well, actually nothing. That's why we had to go, you know, right back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, build two brand new motors. Um, you know, we tried to, you know, uh, work with uh, John and Rich at, at Superboat and see if we couldn't kind of figure out a way um, you know to get the some more power out of the 525s um, you know I just broke it down to a power to weight ratio I mean it, you know, kind of simple in a nutshell uh, you know our uh, our boats about um, was 6.3 pounds per horsepower or horsepower per pound and the 
the, uh, the 750 boats were about 7.1, so it was about an 11, 12% difference. Um, you know, so there's just, uh, there was just no way, you know, if you're giving up 11 or 12%, there's just no way to be competitive. So, um, you know, we opted to build, uh, you know, Ron Potter over at Potter Performance Engines, the guy I've done business with for a long time, great guy. Uh, in fact, we were there last night checking on the new motors and, you know, the blocks are, the blocks are already, uh, you know, the heads will be uh, back, back should be the end of next week. You know, it's going to be tight. We've got some re-rigging and stuff to do. And uh, like I said, with some additional spence, expense that we weren't, you know, planning on. But, uh, hey, you know, that that's racing for you. You know, we, we obviously come here to try to race as many people as we can, you know, and, uh, you know, have a good time. And, and, and I think the, the speeds, we'll probably see on average maybe about 10 miles an hour faster. Um, so the boat will be a little more fun, have a little more acceleration. So that's a good part of it. Um, I think strength-wise for the, the, you know, the safety cockpits of the boats, you know, we're still within an area that, you know, if you do have an accident, you know, the, you know you're going to be able to survive it. Um, you know, that, that's a very important part of it. I think that, uh, you know, especially after Key West last year, it's a, you know, it's a very sobering part that, you know, this is a sport that, you know, you're dealing with water, you know, and a lot of things can happen. I mean, I've been upside down and it doesn't, it happens very, very quickly. And, uh, you know, we've got a great safety crew and everything here. But as we all know, you never know what can go wrong. And, uh, you know, I think by keeping the speeds down a little bit, and, you know, uh, I think it'll be a, you know, a safe class. There'll be a lot of competitive racing. I mean, all the guys are experienced. I mean, you got guys that are moving down from bigger classes up from, you know, the 525 class. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, we you know, it's going to, there's some advantages, there's some bigger boats, some smaller boats. So, you know, in the rough water, the bigger boats are going to have an advantage, you know, in the calm water, I think the smaller boats will have an advantage, but, um, Hey, listen, that's why we race to find out, you know, at the end of the day, you know, who's going to be up there with the checkered flag. That's why we do it. So I, I guess there's no truth uh, to the rumor that, that the 525 is actually dynoed at about 575 and you, you tweak them up to about 650 but they probably if you could do that they wouldn't have lasted long anyway probably no in fact our motors you know with the the boxes that we we're allowed to run the 6,000 rpm boxes um, our motors made 595 horsepower you know stock they make about 565 with the stock boxes so you know in, in fact we just you know last night uh, from turning them the extra rpms you know we had seven broken valve springs and you know the guys been working on the boat the last couple days um, so it's, uh, you know, the, the new motors are, are designed to 7,000 RPMs. I mean, it's still a lot of RPMs, but, you know, hopefully they're telling us these things will last five to eight races. And, uh, you know, hopefully they do. I mean, that's, uh, you know, hopefully we're not having to rebuild stuff all the time and go through that added expense. You know, I guess for some of the racers, it's not such a big deal. But, uh, you know, we're in the boat business and the economy still hasn't uh, kind of recovered that much. So, uh, you know, we, we have a budget, you know, we don't have a big sponsor. You got Tony and I, and I mean, we, we pay the expenses and, and uh, it's not an inexpensive sport. I mean, just from the crew to the, the rigs, to the, you know, the boat, the fuel, the, everything that goes along with it. So, uh, you know, the guys that are here, we all make a very big commitment, you know, both financially and time-wise, um, you know, logistically wise, just to get the boats ready to come here. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that what goes on in between races, um, you know the amount of time that it takes and the, the amount of effort the amount of money that you're you're constantly spending on it so um, hey listen there's a lot of things in life we can be doing other than this and you know we choose to do this we we choose to spend our discretionary income racing boats uh, we don't get paid to do it <laughs> as you very well know this is not a sport that you're going to get rich in um, but you know what it's it's, it's very gratifying um, it's a great group of people you know you're you're with a group of people that share the same passion in life that you do you know, and at the end of the day, that's what brings us all together here. And, um, you know, competition, I've always been a guy that enjoys competition, and Tony as well. I mean, you know, I just think you have those types of personalities that, you know, that's why he competes in the Ironman. I mean, he, he wants to know how far in life he can push himself, you know, physically. Uh, you know, I still play a lot of basketball and hockey, I mean, because we're competitive. And, you know, out here, you know, in fact, you know, in the Miami race, you know, we're out there running and, you know, I told him, I said, it's on now, you know, we're, we're got a few laps left to go. I mean, it, this is where, this is where it's, it's all out. You're going 110% and, you know, it just takes it to that next level. These guys live life on the ragged edge. When you see this boat, Fast Boats Marine Group, keep an eye on it because these guys are definitely 
or usually in the winner's circle.